I learned a long time ago that chook is about the most important livestock in this part of the world. For very poor families, it's the only bird they've got, and I've had the joy of working with them and their owners for about two decades. I was privileged to grow up in rural Australia, and when I was 12, my horse got very sick, and I decided from then on, and she did recover, that I wanted to be a vet. So, jackpot today. <laughs> Fantastic. I guess my eyes were open to international development during my first year at university. That sense of social justice really came through from those days. By the time I'd finished my PhD, I just decided, to, you know, I'd been very fortunate to have a great education and that maybe I should share a little. I took a little bit of an unusual path, and the position I accepted was at the University of Zambia, so I went to work at a new vet school, and it was fantastic. There weren't so many Europeans in Zambia at that time. I'll never forget, I never felt so white in all my life, yeah. I received a small research grant from ACR, and I was able to do some work with farmers. And it became apparent that Newcastle disease was endemic in the country and it was causing huge mortality and impacting dramatically on farmers' lives. One special thing about village poultry is that they're often the only livestock that women have some say over, some control over in their life. In the 23 years now, since I first came to Africa, there have been some remarkable changes. The transformation in the life of women is incredible, from being what was very much the situation where she was the property of her husband, to now where she has assets of her own that she is able to make decisions about. It's incredible, and it does benefit the whole family, because she makes decisions that get all the young children a more balanced diet so that they're able to fulfill their genetic potential. Africa is amazingly resilient. The people and the landscape, you know, they've been through a lot, they've seen a lot. If you think about what Africans have seen from the rampant colonization during the 19th century and now the latest scramble for resources here, the people will survive. And in fact, I'm reminded in my very early days, there was this wonderful Zimbabwean nun who just took me aside and said, listen, sister, we're really grateful that you're here, but really, if we need your help, we'll let you know. <laughs> and so I, it's been great to be reminded of that, that Africans are very capable of doing what they need to do. They sometimes just need that slightly level playing field. And people here are incredibly kind, so it's not unusual to receive gifts. So <laughs> Asha very kindly gave me a rooster and 11 eggs. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> the eggs were very easy to deal with because I love um, those tasty village eggs. But the rooster I returned to her so that he can continue to father a few more chicks. And so I look forward to coming back and, and seeing his progeny within the next year. The wonderful thing about being a vet now is that it's a great time to also collaborate so that as a vet you'll work as part of a multidisciplinary team with anthropologists, with economists and uh, with farmers who are also very knowledgeable. It's important to remember that there are some ecosystems where cropping is simply not appropriate because of the soil type, because of the type of rainfall, where communities survive because of their livestock. So the role of the veterinarian is even more important as we look at how we feed this world of ours.